This is the Sony a7 IV. Since picking it up in May, it's become my main camera for creating YouTube content. It's already incredibly capable, but using it with a cage and other accessories definitely takes it to another level. Hey pals, welcome back. I've seen a couple of comments recently asking me to review the cameras that I use to create content. There's already videos out there from other creators that outline the more technical elements of the a7 IV much better than I ever could, but I wanted to give an overview of what setup I'm using to get the most out of this camera. This video will be split into three parts. What I like about this camera and how it helps me to create content, what I personally think could be better, and finally, which products I've used to create what I think is the perfect camera rig for creating YouTube content. So this camera has a couple of features that really benefit me when making videos. I think my favorite has to be the new breathing compensation. Basically, when a lens focuses, you can get this slight change in focal length as the internal glass elements move around. This can be a bit distracting, especially when the scene is otherwise static like this one, but the a7 IV can automatically correct for this when using a selection of Sony's native lenses. I'm also a really big fan of the new 33 megapixel sensor. The great thing about having all those megapixels is that you can crop into APS-C mode without any loss in video quality, essentially giving you an extra 50% zoom and a more diverse set of focal lengths. I find this really useful with my 16-35mm as this is such a wide lens that sometimes I do find myself wanting an extra bit of range and being able to crop in effectively allows me to zoom into 52.5mm which is obviously a really versatile focal length. The footage that you can capture with this lens is also really nice to work with. While it's not quite the standard of RAW, 10-bit 42 does give you a fair bit of flexibility when color grading, and there are plenty of different shooting modes available. Finally, the general handling and button layout is really well thought out, which really helps when you're filming yourself. The improved menu system also contributes to this, and I found that now that I have a bit more familiarity with this camera, I'm much more efficient and spend less time making sure that everything is set up right. One of the things I think could be better is the flip out screen. Personally, I really enjoy the flip up screen of my a6600. It's really useful when shooting awkward angles like a top down view, and there are times where I wish that I could have a similar function on the a7 IV. I've also noticed that if you don't open the flip out screen, then you're at risk of the camera overheating quite quickly, even with the auto power off temperature set to high. It's not the end of the world, but it can be annoying if you have to wait for your camera to cool down. And I also don't love having the screen off center from the camera view. Having a cropped 4K60 also isn't ideal, especially if you're shooting indoors in a smaller space like I am. Fortunately, there's not really any other compromises that come with this. You can still shoot in 10-bit 42 and make use of the other features like breathing compensation and active steady shot. Overall, the a7 IV is still an excellent camera and if you're looking for an entry-level full-frame option, you really can't go wrong with it. My complaints are pretty much just minor annoyances and I can see myself using this camera for a really long time. Okay, so let's get stuck into the build itself. So this is the a7 IV camera cage by Smallrig. It's essentially a skeleton and the camera sits inside of it. There's a couple of screws that you attach to the camera body itself to make sure it doesn't wobble around. So as you can see, there are lots of different mounting holes on this. And what this essentially does is it gives you lots of different versatile options for mounting different accessories. And it's also a little bit more ergonomic than just the camera body on its own. I guess there's an element of safety too. It's this enclosed sort of structure, so if your camera does take a knock, you've probably got a bit of extra protection there too. So first things first, I'm actually gonna attach the camera to it. The best way to do this is to actually just take the lens off first, so you're not gonna risk damaging any of the glass elements. What I really like about the Sony a7 IV is that it has this new feature where the shutter sort of comes down when it's turned off. It's quite nice. It just means that you've got a little bit of extra protection against the sensor. So you attach these cages by literally just placing the camera into it first. And there's a quarter inch thread at the bottom, which is gonna be the first part that I actually attach the camera to. So as you can see, there is also this little tool that is magnetically attached to the bottom of the cage, really handy. So if you're out and about shooting, you don't need to worry about taking any additional tools with you either. So just really nice to have that with you. To be honest, that's probably enough just as it is. It's in there pretty sturdy, it's not really going anywhere, but there is also this secondary attachment in the top left corner too, which just use one of the sort of mounting holes for where the strap clips go. So I'm just gonna quickly screw that in too, just to give us a bit of extra stability and security. And there we go, that is step one of my perfect camera rig setup. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually to reattach the lens just so that everything is nicely put back together because everything's going to sort of build off of this now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach one of these Manfrotto RC2 plates. So I use these on all of my cameras because they're on all of my tripods, gimbals, sliders, etc. 
and it just means I'm not wasting time removing or attaching plates to various cameras. So I'm just gonna attach this to one of the quarter inch threads on the bottom of the camera here. And once that's nice and tightly attached, that is nice and secure, that's not going anywhere along with the rest of the cage. Pretty solid feeling so far. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna attach a side handle to the cage itself. A lot of people prefer to use top handles, just personal preference, but I prefer having a side handle because I feel like I get a much stronger two-handed grip. And yeah, I guess it's just another extra mounting point as well because there is also this sort of hot shoe mount on the top of it too, which is quite useful. The way that this attaches is by using a NATO rail. There is actually one inbuilt to the side of this camera cage, which I really like. So this handle literally just slides onto the side here. And then it's just a case of tightening it up, making sure that it's level with the rest of the cage. Once you've done that, you can see I've got a nice two-handed grip there, which is solid. It's not going anywhere. I can use one hand if I want to. Yeah, I really like this side handle. It's the right size for me as well. In the past, I've used handles, which looks great and had really good reviews. But when they arrived, they were often a little bit too small for me. I've got relatively large hands. I wanted something that would be able to match my sort of size requirements. So because I'm using a side handle, what I'm actually gonna attach next is a monitor mount. So in addition to having an inbuilt NATO rail, this cage also has lots of inbuilt RE connectors. So an RE connector is a 3 8 inch screw hole with these two accompanying guiding pins next to it as well. So you, usually you can just screw these in by hand, but you might need to use a Allen key just to sort of tighten it up after, which is what I'm gonna do now, just to make sure that everything is nice and secure. There is also an Allen key at the bottom of this side handle, which I really like. A lot of these small rig products have like magnetized little hidden tools. They're just yeah, really well thought out products. So now that I've got all of my mounting connections attached, I'm gonna start adding my accessories. I'm gonna start off with my microphone of choice, which is the Rode VideoMic NTG. I use this microphone on all of my YouTube videos. It runs off a rechargeable battery and it's just a really nice sounding microphone. I really like using this. So I usually attach this to my side handle, just so it's out of the way and I can still sort of zoom in and out on the lens without interfering with it too much. What I will say is that some of these accessories have cables. I try to do my best to sort of keep them quite tidy and tucked in amongst the cage but unfortunately it's just one of those things where sometimes it's gonna look a little bit messy. So my monitor of choice is the Godox GM55. It's a really portable external monitor, which I really like using because it's obviously a lot bigger than the flip out screen that you get on the camera, but it's also got some really good features for the price. So you can't record externally on this monitor, but you can use it to import LUTs and sort of see how your footage will look before it's been exported into your video editing software. So I'm gonna attach the monitor to the mount. So this monitor also has the RE connections I talked about earlier, which I really like because now it's not going anywhere. It's really secure, but what I like about the monitor mount is it actually has lots of different options for moving the monitor once it's mounted. So not only can I tilt it, as you just saw, but I can also rotate it, which is really helpful if I want to switch between filming myself and then obviously turning the camera around to sort of shoot some B-roll or other additional footage. So one of the things I really like about this monitor is that it's actually powered using NPF batteries. So you can get these pretty much anywhere. Lots of different companies make them. And if you get a big one like this, it actually allows you to power both the monitor and the camera for a long time. So now that the monitor is powered on, all I need to do is connect it to the camera itself. What I really like about the Sony a7 IV is it actually has a full-size HDMI port, which means I can pretty much use any HDMI cable I've got lying around. Now, I've actually bought a small right-angled right-angle cable specifically for this camera setup, but it's nice to know that you've got lots of different options available. So like I said, this monitor actually allows you to output power as well. So the next thing I've got is this DC power to battery cable from SmallRig, which allows me to power the camera directly from the monitor's removable battery. If you know you've been shooting for a long time, it's really nice to have that large power supply, which is really useful if your shoot overruns for whatever reason. So as you can see, I've now powered on the camera. You should be able to see that not just the monitor, but also the camera is powered as well. So you should be seeing what I'm seeing, which is obviously the camera in front of me here. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't use this cable all the time. The batteries that come with the a7 IV do last a really long time. And I usually don't have any issues with using those. So unless I'm doing a particularly long video, I'd usually just stick to using one of these batteries. So the last thing I'm gonna to attach to this camera rig is my teleprompter. So the teleprompter comes with a set of these mounting rings in various sizes. They literally just screw onto the front of your lens like any sort of filter would. I'm just gonna mount the camera to this mini tripod just so I can actually attach the teleprompter. So that's why I really like these RC2 plates. You can move the camera between devices really easily. And now that it's on there, it's not going anywhere. So you literally just grab your teleprompter and it just slides onto the front element like that. So as you can see, the teleprompter is just reflecting whatever text is on the phone below it. 
It just means that I can read my script without sort of looking down at my phone or whatever else that I've sort of used to write my script. And yeah, it works really well. Like, it's crazy how you can go from multiple takes and lots of sort of stumbling on your words while you're trying to get a solid take for a video out. Whereas with a teleprompter, it's pretty much just one and done. It's all there, you just read it very naturally, and it's so much easier. I honestly can't stress how good teleprompters are for this sort of style of video. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I've really enjoyed using this setup for the last few months, and I definitely think that it's helped elevate my YouTube content. I've left links to everything that I've talked about in this video in the description below. So let me know if you have any questions and I'll be more than happy to help. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.